So I've been building camper vans for the last six years or so, and along the way it's been really helpful to have some continuing education in, in the areas of electricity, electrical systems. And one of those sources is one that's widely recognized, Explorus Life. They have outstanding videos and good content and things. But then the other person that's been really helpful is a friend of mine named Gary Reza. Gary has a website that's excellent for DIY folks who are building their own camper vans, and it's called Build a Green RV. And so especially a lot of the ideas related to simplicity and what you, what you need or don't need uh, has come from his system. So I'd like to highlight that today. So I'd like to talk about the nine things that stood out to me as far as key principles for building a system. A lot of people, they tend to want the biggest and best. They want to uh, brag about how powerful their system is or how much power they use. And I think it's, it's more important to ask a bunch of different questions and it relates to, well, how much power do you actually need? And then how much charging do you have? Uh, how big is your battery system? How big is your inverter? How large are your wires? Uh, all of those things that have to all kind of match each other, they have to be the right fit for the right function. And so it's just more important to ask, does it meet your needs? Does it work well? Can you rely on it? And is it simple so that it's, it's easy to understand and use? I'd like to talk about batteries. In the last, say, five years, battery prices have dropped significantly. And what's also great is the, the quality of the batteries have gone up a lot. And one of the, the most helpful sources for understanding what's going on in the battery world is a fellow named Will Prowse. He has a YouTube channel that reviews batteries that come out. And so for the last like three years, I've used a lot of his recommendations for the kinds of batteries. Uh, I've often purchased SOK as a, his top category for quality and all that. And, and recently, one of my last vans, I did the 280 amp hour single battery that has both heated uh, for below freezing use as well as the Bluetooth. And that's, that's been a great battery. The current client that I'm working with here wanted to push the envelope a little bit on things that are more inexpensive, but still good quality, solid uh, products. And so I've uh, chosen Will's economy brand, which is uh, Litime, Litime, L-I-T-I-M-E. And so uh, I especially like the heated ones. So it, for their case, I have 200 amp hour batteries that are uh, currently for sale for, I think it's 257 each, which is just an amazing price because in the past, you often had to pay like a thousand dollars per hundred amp hours of batteries. And that's, that's really not necessary anymore. Uh, there's some really good options. They'll last a long time. Uh, they have good production standards. And so, so I think this is an option. I just did notice that Lee Time had the 280 amp hour single battery for I think 519, the, the only downside is it just doesn't have heated. And for a lot of the vans I'm making, I wanna make sure that they work really well in the winter. Uh, the nice thing about the 280, it, it does have the cutoff when it gets to 32 degrees. It's just not heated, but that would be a good option for in this case to, uh, to start with your power source, which then actually that savings from those batteries alone basically pays for the entire rest of the system if you're open to considering these uh, more economy brands. One of the things that I've learned over time is the value of higher amp charging. So some systems I had maybe had 20 amps charging from solar and maybe 30 amps charging from the alternator or DC to DC. And I realized it's, it's just in a practical sense helpful to have higher amps charging even if your battery system isn't that much bigger but if, if every all your energy use during a normal day can be more easily replenished by having higher amps charging then that's a great step in the right direction so i've chosen the single uh, charging unit this one from kisse k-i-s-a-e their their main market is the the marine boating industry they're a well-recognized brand put lots of good products this one is their 50 amp charger so what that means is when you're driving down the road, you can charge from your alternator up to 50 amps, which is, is great because what's nice about alternator charging, you can 
basically almost always rely on it, if you're driving, obviously. What I've done on the roof is I mount a large, single, uh, in this case, 400 watt panel on the roof, which then can generate at a max about 34 amps. And then this charger is able to handle that also. So, so the two, especially together, whether you're charging from solar or charging from alternator, um, allows you to more quickly refill your batteries and helps with those days when you're just not quite sure, maybe you're parked in the shade, maybe you're not driving as much, but it just helps the practicality of recharging your batteries work better. So most vans have some type of inverter and it converts 12 volt battery electrical systems into 120 volt electrical systems like you would have in your house. And the inverter I've often used is an inverter and a charger. So that means that part of the time when you're off grid, that you can use it as an inverter to provide that 120 volt power. But whenever you're plugged into shore power, you can charge your batteries with uh, the shore power. And what I've learned over time is it's not really necessary to do much shore power charging. That if you have good charging, uh, alternator charging or solar charging, then it's not as big a deal. And then also what's helpful with that is the, uh, a lot of times your inverters, and some people think that they need like a 3000 watt inverter or a 2000 watt inverter, and especially 3000 is, is not regularly needed. It's not uh, it's something that with just a little bit of, of adjustment in how you're using it, you can get, get by fine with something less than that. What's nice is a 1500 watt inverter allows you to use just about anything. So uh, most like plug-in heaters, they, they use 1500 watts. And so if you have up to that level, you can plug in one heating appliance for a little bit of time if you need it, and it, and it works fine. What's, what's not a good idea is to heat your van with electricity when you're off grid. And so that's a whole separate topic. But so what I've done is uh, instead of purchasing a Samlux inverter charger that oftentimes they, they can run in the thousands, so 1,000, 1,500, just depend on what model you're getting. I switched to a Samlux inverter that wasn't a charger and it's just under $400. So it's a, it's a good quality inverter. It does one function inverting, but because I don't really need shore power charging, then I can get by with, with, with using this unit right here. It's also quite a bit simpler to install and to program. And so there's a number of things I like about the simplicity of that. So your electrical ground for your 120 volt systems is one of the most important safety features of your, uh, your setup. And so a, a common inverter charger comes with a special switch built into them that senses when you're plugged into shore power and so then it switches the ground to shore power. But then if you're not plugged into shore power and you're off grid and you're using your inverter, then it makes the switch so that the ground would be connected to the vehicle. And so that switching back and forth is super important in terms of electrical safety. So uh, a single inverter oftentimes doesn't have that switch, that automatic switch to it. And you can also purchase a, an, a switch to add to your system. Or in this case, and this is one of the key ideas that came from Gary, was that you can have a, a manual switch that you perform, and which is completely foolproof, but also has a number of advantages. So basically, this, this wire right here is wired to two other outlets in the van. So two plug-ins that can be used just depending on where you're seated. Uh, most of the time you would only use one of those plug-ins uh, in terms of not using both at the same time. It's not the end of the world if you use both, but anyway. Um, but basically if you have one or two outlets in your van, then an arrangement like this would be completely uh, safe and functional where you basically, in this case, the power is coming in from the, uh, the shore power plug-in on the outside of the van. So I know I'm plugged into shore power, so I'm gonna use my electrical outlets from this source, and I know that the ground is connected to the shore power. But if I'm someplace else and I'm uh, off-grid and I wanna plug into the inverter, then you unplug it here and 
plug in there to your inverter. So now I know I'm providing 120 volt electricity from my inverter. And so just the simple act of moving from one to the other, know, you know for sure that your ground is being switched. A lot of times people will put 120 volt outlets all through their van. There may be six or seven outlets all over and then they run all those wires into a small junction box, similar like you'd have in a house. And then there's lots of different breakers for all that. And then, so but basically you're creating a lot of complexity that isn't needed. And so by going with this route, um, it's, uh, it just solves a number of problems, makes a fully functional system, but just a lot simpler than it may be in other situations. One of the key components of an electrical system is a good hub. And I've chosen the Blue Sea Safety Hub, this unit right here. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's called the Blue Sea Safety Hub 150, and it has room for four inputs, four larger electrical sources coming in. In this case, the solar alternator, as well as the inverter. And then it has room for a number of outlets uh, being distributed around your van for lights and batteries and everything that you typically run on 12 volt, especially. And so uh, it's a, it's a, what's nice is it's a, it's a bus bar combined with fuse uh, connections so that they're integrated together and it makes it easy to have your fuses and know what's where and where everything is wired as well as a chart as to how things are being used. The other important piece is uh, a battery monitor, a shunt-based battery monitor, which I think every van needs to have uh, one of those. There's lots of different options. In this case, it's a Victron Smart Shunt, which allows you to monitor it with the Bluetooth app on your phone. And it does an excellent job of just monitoring every single piece of energy, both going into your system and going out of your system. Especially with a 12 volt system, when wires are, are close to each other, but they're not quite touching, there's the potential for some significant arcing to go on. You're dealing with lots of amps. You're dealing with the potential of drawing a lot of power from your batteries. And so the, the risk of amping sparking is just bigger with a 12 volt system than it is with a 120 volt system. It's still an issue, definitely, but it's just amplified. And so one of the recommendations when you have a solar panel, say on the roof of your van, and then the wires are coming down and then they connect into the charger, um, that you use a double pole disconnect. Uh, American Boat and the Audit Council uh, electrical code requires that, that you have a double pole disconnect. A lot of people use a, a simple single breaker that's connected to, like say, the positive wire from your solar panels, but those aren't, aren't recommended. There's also some double pole disconnects that aren't as effective at just making that when you disconnect from both wires, that they're done in a way that is quick and pulls apart and, and doesn't allow sparking to occur. And so one product that has a, a distinct advantage in that area is called this Anderson Power Pole Connections. And I've used two of these. I've, I've used one for the alternator charging just because it was convenient as far as the same kind of disconnect, but especially for solar. And so when you, when you disconnect the solar like that, you've made a clean separation of those two sources and accomplish what the code requires, but also in a very simple and effective way so that you don't have to worry about any sparks. I have this red, this big red blue C disconnect. It's connected both to the 120 volt systems and the 12 volt systems. And so by switching this right here, it allows you to turn off the system with one good switch. It's, uh, it's not too hard to reach from the back of the van when you're working in uh, and especially if this area is loaded with gear, it's, it's easy to find. And so with one switch, you can turn on or off your system, uh, especially at the end of a trip. The other thing that I just want to highlight is that all these things that I've talked about here, when you combine these all together, this whole system costs about $1,800. And that's at least half, if not a third of what a lot of uh, systems cost in terms of all the components and things. And that's assuming that you would put it all together once you buy the gear. So I have uh, a link to all the items, and if anybody is interested in asking questions about these things, I'd be glad to, uh, to explain any of those things. But all the items are, uh, I have no 
um, uh, affiliation with any of these links. The, there's no income source from those things. And so, uh, but I just want to be able to share things that are helpful to people. And in this case, to share the balanced system that's not too big, not too small. It's the Goldilocks electrical system for your camper van. Thank you.